Well, hello, once again, you have found a Texas Steampunk Connection, broadcasting to you throughout the multiverse, Steamverse, from our various bunkers and airships. With me, as always, is Fax, Gentleman Adventurer. Hello, hello. <laughs> with me is Jack from Steam Chest. Hello. <laughs> and with us today, Master Blue Stocking from <laughs> Steampunk Dollhouse Podcast. So once again, we are here to talk, oh, probably about Steampunk, most likely, because that's what this is about. Thank you for listening to the Texas Steampunk Connection. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Hello. Hello. Big news, big news. I don't oh. have big news. Oh, I thought you had big news. Oh, Blue Stocking has big news. What, my new tattoo? Oh, no, sorry. You're talking about the other thing? <laughs> <laughs> the PhD thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, minor news. I'm a candidate now, so technically not a student anymore. So is that what they call you now? A candidate? Yeah, once you've completed all your coursework and you coursework and you've done your qualifying exams, you're technically because I'm not taking classes anymore. I'm signed up for dissertation hours. She has so no more class. No more. So you're in that place yep. where you have to write for years on years before you graduate again. Yep. No more classes. No more books. No more teachers. Dirty looks. Well, my advisor has some dirty looks, but yeah, <laughs> no, I have a year and a half to write a dissertation, and I'm done in December 2023. And that sounds wild, but it's actually not that bad. So, congratulations. Yeah. That is amazing. Congrats. Candidate Blue Stocking. <laughs> Thank you. Doesn't sound as good as Dr. Blue Stocking, though. I will get there. We will get there. <laughs> Very short year and a half. Cucumber will hung up horn. Awesome. Yep. Well, let's see. What else has happened in the last two weeks? It got hot. It got so hot. It's horrible. This, this is like July hot. Yeah, yep. it's not this right. Is stupid hot. Not enough oh. rain and too much the, hot. The air conditioner in my office died about two oh, weeks no. ago. And so it's one of those things we just open the doors in the morning and it gets cool. And then it just gets up to like 82 in the building. And we finally got it fixed today. So the air conditioner kicked on and it was yeah. all good. Yeah, hey, it's Lawrence. just muggy. Hi, Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. ERCOT Energy uh, has already had like six of their generators fail. And uh, a friend of mine in Galveston said they were all out of, they, they didn't have any power today, starting at like noon. Oh, Jesus. Welcome to Texas. Awesome. You know, <laughs> the winter is one thing, but I mean, it's Texas. It's hot. It's hot here. So you, I don't know. I don't know. So I, yeah, I actually Robbie did told hear me to, We need to cut power and uh, bring our, our thermostats up to, 78 between three and six at oh <laughs> yeah oh yeah. uh, no mm -mm. Mm -mm. no so what you're telling me is the fact that for the last however long we have allowed privatized electricity <laughs> to happen that we did not deem it important enough for them to maintain equipment but only to build more of it that's one reason we have issues where like a 95-year-old hook finally grates itself through and breaks, thus causing wildfires because the maintenance was not worth it because they don't get paid on maintenance. They get paid by building more infrastructure. It's bailing wire and duct tape at this point. I mean, yeah, maintenance doesn't bring in more dollars. Plus years. Yeah. Essentially, they were doing a test or they were looking at it going, the entire nation's grid needs to be redone from the ground up. Because a lot of it has, we're still running on stuff that was around in 1905. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, I lived in Pennsylvania for eight years and however old the system may be, we never, the only time we lost power was when tree branches froze and fell onto the line. Yeah. We didn't just lose power because the state decided to do what, yeah. And Texas is also growing at a ridiculous rate right now. So yeah. We, have, yeah. we don't have enough power plants for the amount of consumption we're using either. S Tax sits there looking like a land baron twirling his mustache. <laughs> He's like, so you're saying the oil uh, baron. <laughs> the energy grid that we have is Victorian. Uh, He's going to hop on best. his train and get Victorian out of here. Best. <laughs> Go to the seaside. We are already deep into the steampunk uh, uh, 
topic by bitching about the weather today. This is great. <laughs> Connections. You got to make those bridges. Yep. <laughs> It's all about the transition. Well, considering we're all hot and bothered, how about we take a drink? <laughs> what are we all drinking this yeah. evening? Dax, what weird beer do you have tonight? <laughs> Honestly, I think I may have the weird one tonight. Well, okay. well I don't think you can outdo me. Oh, well, let's see. Um, what do you have? A challenger. Because, because of the <laughs> summer heat, I was feeling nostalgic to days gone by. And I reached for what I felt in my youth was the <laughs> finest beverage, purple Kool-Aid. Really? <gasps> oh, nice. I can't believe how much I've missed this stuff. I love it. Is it like the the powder and the sugar and the... Uh-huh. You went old... Yeah. Did you put oh, anything so it's not in the, it? It's not the, the... I know. It's just straight Kool-Aid. Straight Kool <laughs> wow. I haven't had that in so long. Yeah. Straight to the sugar centers of the brain. <laughs> Like this much flavor and about this much sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I used to collect the little Kool-Aid points and send them in for <laughs> the <laughs> the weird stuff that you could get in the Kool-Aid Man catalog. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love that guy. Oh. Blue right, Star, you're not drinking your red tonight. No, this is nice and cold. It's Rivata Moscato. I don't know. It's something Italian. It's Moscato, and it's cold, and it's bubbly. So, yeah, I usually switch to Moscato in the summer. Is it a sparkling Moscato, then? Well, I mean, it's like a little fizzy. Yeah, Moscato usually is a little bit fizzy. So it's mm. it's delightful and when it's really, really hot. And it also mixes really good with, um, like, flavored iced teas. Make a little cocktail, iced tea cocktail with it. Yeah. I like what Rita says here. Yeah, Suggest, um, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Kool Aid and vodka, or Everclear. I, I mean, if you want to make clear. trash can punch, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not saying I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not doing it now either. <laughs> I'm not doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I found something strange, and I, I, I think possibly you've had this before, Thax. But I found it at the store, and I'm like, no, this has to be a thing, and. I okay, so this is by far the coolest drink I've had in a long time, and I want to build continue. up to this. I know, <laughs> I know. No. <laughs> I'm actually going to get my mom some of this, uh, okay, she would like it. But uh, it is the best made sour pickle beer. We oh. were just talking about pickle booze earlier. Oh, shit, this great stuff's great. <laughs> Bleep me out. I mean, it, uh, I, I don't know. I liked pickle juice before, but not not on the. I don't know something about the five percent alcohol. It's right better than it ought to be. It, it, yeah, this should, <laughs> even my. I, I even let my kid have like a sip of this, and he's like, "Can I have more pickle juice?" I'm like, "No, you may not. This is not <laughs> not something you can have." Good kid, um, let me get you your own can. Yeah, I thought he was going to hate it, honestly, but yeah, no, apparently not. <laughs> One of my advisors has a pickle. She loves pickle beers and pickleback. And I saw something. I can't. I couldn't find it again. I lost it. But it was moonshine. It was pickle moonshine. But it had the pickles in it, like the it dill is. spears oh, in it. And it was pickle. Oh and I, just, God, I lost it. And I've been trying to find it again. Yeah. I don't know how they did this. Like, I don't know how they kept the pickle juice flavor so strong in this. And it doesn't taste like beer. It's kind of frothy. Mm -hmm. and it, it, But it does not taste like a beer at all. It tastes like you're literally grabbed the brine and just started chugging dill brine and for those of you who really like dill pickle brine it's fantastic or if you like those really big pickles and you sit there and just like gore them with your face at a baseball game, <laughs> those um, giant ones yeah. this this is that in a can and it's alcoholic and i don't understand how to make the world any better i yeah. mean like 1985 at the skating rink the giant this pickle is, yeah this is a pinnacle <laughs> of existence in a beer in the beer world in an area that i did not know existed until like two weeks ago I was watching, <laughs> this is so weird, I was watching a YouTube channel about travel in Mexico and about different products you cannot get in Mexico. And the, the he was listing a number of things that are perfectly normal. And he said, pickle beer. And I was like, well, of course you can't get it in Mexico. That's something crazy. Nobody <laughs> drinks that. Apparently, I am wrong. And Yankees... Ohioans or somebody, it's it's very common to put pickle juice in your beer. Well, 
I mean, we put lime and lemon in our beer. Why this? this yeah, actually, true. And after having this, I'm like, what does a pickle margarita sound like? And I'm like, that sounds. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a lot of salt. That is a lot of sodium. I mean, I mean, it's already it's it's already a margarita. Yeah. And I, I mean, mean I like you just pickles, but... instead of putting a lime in it, you just put a spear in there. And as you get more drunk, you just eat that pickle spear. It's gonna I be just... fantastic. I feel like you're going to hit the, the event horizon for pickle. It's just going to be too much. I mean, I'm willing to try to find this event horizon. <laughs> what about what about a, a pickle martini? That sounds like a better. That, no, that, know, that, yeah. that does. That does. Because a dirty martini good. is just olive juice. So yeah, and pickles yeah. are better than olives any day. So hey, I like olives. I will take olives. Over I like olives, too. Me. I like them as like <laughs> like in Spain. Olives are great or off of Fax's neck. Apparently is another good spot. <laughs> Oh yeah. Puppy loves Sorry. you so much. She comes over. I have to give you a kiss on camera. <laughs> right up the nose. <laughs> What's that on your face? Makeup? <laughs> You're so oh, salty. I... Yeah, well, yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> I did have a pickleback once. Um well I was uh some years ago, I felt feel like I was much younger then, but uh, it was a uh, uh, we were out uh, bar hopping, and was really drunk, really really drunk. Like no way I was going to get home drunk, and we all fumbled into this bar that had a that had a, a Bronco busting machine. Oh no! Oh, no. The place was totally empty except this machine. And they had uh, pickleback shots, which, if you're not familiar, that's a that's a shot of whiskey uh, and a shot of pickle juice. And uh, they lined them all up, and the guys took their shot of whiskey, and I'm I'm pretty bad off, <laughs> so I'm I'm sipping it slowly, <laughs> just to try to maintain a balance. They're like, just shoot it. I'm like. Mind your business. <laughs> Mind your own goddamn got, business. Got to that pickle shot. Did not feel good. Took it back. And and magic happened. I, I cannot explain it. Suddenly, all the... Um, all the, the dizziness and, and sick feeling of being drunk just disappeared. Completely cleared. I was still drunk. I was still like you didn't feel like it. Having a good time. Uh but I was having a good time again. It was magic. Did you ride the bull? Uh no. Oh no. <laughs> I thought this was gonna lead into the fact you took pickle shots and ride a bull and Yeah. Then, like, <laughs> I was waiting for the story of really him hold his hat riding the bull. I watched the other guys ride the fall off the bull. <laughs> that was enough. <laughs> yeah, no, those things never appealed seconds. to me. Yeah. That's a tailbone injury just waiting to happen. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, that's not how I broke my tailbone. <laughs> that's not how I broke mine either. I fell down the stairs on my butt. I was def I was defenestrated. Uh, uh, hello. Um, defenestrated? I can never yeah. say that word. I can't say that word either. I, I fell through a window. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, you really were. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> From how yeah. high up? It was well. It was out of a out of a double wide trailer, so a good eight feet from the ground. Honestly, because oh, it's okay. like two feet and a half up, and <laughs> Still, then there's yeah. the wall, and the wall is another four feet up before the window. Oh, so no, yeah, I went straight out. Like I, I leaned my chair back, and oh, did you go the backward? Yeah, backward like, through the window. Asshole over elbows. Oh no! Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, it was fun. Oh, ouch. Oh, that makes me hurt just thinking about it. Yeah. Oh. Like shattered glass everywhere and everything. It was plexiglass. Yeah, but still that can get sharp. It didn't it didn't break much. Like okay. the whole window just kind of popped out. I was oh, okay. I was the worst one off. The window just, just went right back in and we popped out of it back in again. But uh, so now in my mind I'm imagining the door the uh the window went boop, kicked you out closed. <laughs> Uh, no, it, it did pop out. It did pop out because I was leaning back in the chair. Did it slam shut when it was done? <laughs> it was like a cartoon. No, I know, right? It should have been. It wasn't. It wasn't one that opened like that. It should have slid up and down. So when it popped out, the whole frame piece came. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. Eh, yeah, it sucked. 
but yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> <clears throat> I just like being able to tell people I was deep in string it and that's <laughs> I like to tell people this thing that they can't pronounce. <laughs> When I get it right, everyone's like, what does that mean? And the people that, who know are like laughing a lot. It's such a stupidly fancy word for getting for being thrown, thrown off out of a building. Yeah. It's so dumb. That's one reason I love it so much. It's like an overly complicated word yeah. that fits right into the whole steampunk motif of trying to make light of something that happened to you is terrible. <laughs> I was defestinated. <laughs> there. Stefan, I got yeeted. <laughs> Yes. Yes, it is a fancy way to say you got yeeted off of a building or out a window. Through a window. (laughs) Anywho, we're talking about hats, right? We're talking about hats again. Yes. Twenty minutes later, we're into hats now. Finally, all right. What have we learned about hats? (laughs) You mean last last episode or, or since then? Well, I mean, we got some lessons today. I wish you could have come on and talked to us about it. Yeah, um, I can read those to us, but <laughs> I don't think it's going to be nearly as entertaining if I could get my wife on here. But yeah, she is, she is currently unavailable. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I dislike it when my when my girl is unavailable. Just, <laughs> oh, no. gotta, I got to wait for her to break up with that guy before I can do it again. And, you know, it's just the whole deal. There's a lot going on over there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other podcast <laughs> it's texas team connection <coughs> after dark after dark <laughs> we'll have to come up with like some sort of weird like oh, what's that oh theremin music to go with. i was gonna say it's sexy jazz steampunk music <laughs> oh. sexy jazz theremin with the with the jazz yeah there we are <laughs> slow jam <laughs> gonna get a little blue well, well, well uh i can i can throw the uh, the voice augmentator on Thax, and you can get real low <laughs> <laughs> call me Elwood. all right so what did your wife have to say about hats <laughs> so because <laughs> i'm picturing little... barry white now so we need to move on oh brother there that's, you not, go. that's not that's not very white before that Anywho, uh, so I made a joke within our in our little thingy we talk on here. Our um, exclusive group. All right, yeah, the exclusive. Group. <laughs> you want to be part of the exclusive group? Well, there will be a Patreon page here shortly where you can get into the, exclu- no, uh, the exclusive. The exclusive chat. There's all, we already need to put more stuff on our Patreon, so there might actually <laughs> just do that. Start talking on Patreon, not on freaking Facebook Messenger. <laughs> I would appreciate that. Jack, Jack, your wife, her hats. I'm, I'm getting to it. I got to scroll. There's, a, there's Too many people on the group chat have ADHD. This oh is my what Lord. happens. People, we need to stick to stick to the thing. Anyway. Stay on one track. Yeah, so uh, a lot of steam apparently is involved in making hats. So it That's is exceedingly... No huh? That's no lie. Yeah. No, no lie. Yeah, no. I didn't realize how much steam it took to actually make a hat. Um and the more steam you use, the better because it like makes it plump and fits correctly. It's the equivalent of like taking a plastic and hitting it with a heat gun. I didn't realize it was quite that malleable, um, even though I I just don't know that much about hats. And to be clear, we are we are diving straight into felt forming. Yep. A proper actual hat, mm-hmm. not making it out of cardboard like I suggested two weeks ago, which is terrible. Stable to your head. <laughs> well, but there was also Indiana Jones. We also need to discuss the fact that there was mercury involved in the the construction, oh. hot mercury involved hot in the mercury, construction yeah. of these hats. So I there mean, was anybody a, who's watched any we type. We don't do that that way anymore. Mad as a hatter came from There's you a know, reason. yeah, uh, for a reason. Brain damage from heavy metal poisoning. Mm-hmm. It was bad. Yeah, yeah. Mercury <laughs> so and arsenic. The Victorians love mercury and arsenic. Yeah, you get a little bit of arsenic, it gives you that nice pale look. Well, the beautiful anything. green dresses and the green wallpaper and the green yeah, arsenic furniture and color. children children's toys were painted with the arsenic green and paint. lead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, lead toys with arsenic paint. Oh, man. <laughs> but the Romans liked lead. They they did lead. They did lead pipes. It made water taste good. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so hats. Uh, <laughs> so she tells us, yeah. So, 
So lots of steam was involved in the stretching of heavy and the heavy materials that made better quality hats. Um, so they would they tend to be heavier. The heavier the hat, the better the quality is. So how heavy is your hat, Fax? How heavy is my head? The hat. Your hat. The hat oh, that the, lies upon hat. your head. Yeah. Um, I mean, we could weigh both, but I recommend not doing that. Uh, not, not, not very heavy. Um, okay. Well, in today's today, we also do it a little differently. Obviously, we're not using mercury to help. Um, I'm assuming mercury was used in like as kind of like a liquid. Um, I think it was. Style. I think it was a fuller for the felt. It had something to do with the felt processing. I think, but I don't. I know that mercury is involved. I don't know the. If anyone knows a mul mul a milliner, 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 milliner. A milliner, milliner. milliner. What? we would love to have them on the stream. And they can tell us and show us pictures all day, every day, and we'll just we'll have a whole deal with it. But until then, I got like a hat the, historian. The, yeah, I, we need a hat historian. I have the TLDR right here from the wife, who <laughs> is a want to be, and I will admit I don't really know a whole lot about it, which is unfortunate. But I just like wearing them to look cool and sexy and hot and other things. <laughs> cool. All righty then. Yeah, I'm he's just got gonna, a healthy self esteem. <laughs> you got to these days. You must have a really large hat size. <laughs> it's bigger every day. I was gonna say, does it have? Is it adjustable back there? I have to re-steam my hat often. <laughs> so apparently, also uh, for the lighter hats, you can use steam wool into shape, and that will actually. That's one reason wool was very popular. Was it is a lighter type? So I guess like your hat's wool, isn't it? Uh, Mine. Yeah. Um. It. it uh, it's probably got wool in it, maybe. Gotcha. It, it's it's a cheap knockoff of a hat, honestly. Um, I understand that. Okay. Uh, I don't know what it's made of. Polyester, plasticky. Um, mm. It. I. I don't think it's it's proper, proper. Uh, wool felt like a, a high quality hat would be. That's my, a polyester. Middle of the road hat. Yeah. Um, what I could justify. No, I feel that. Oh, and Rita, and I actually, I was looking it up at the same time Rita, or that Rita was answering. Yeah, it was used to make the, the fibers stiffer um, for hats. So that's what the mercury was used for. It was to toughen and, and stiffen up the fiber. So but, um, did she like, pour it on top in a big blob and roll it around? Like That's what I'm, because mercury, like, yeah, it, I don't it, know. Like I said, I, I was doing it was heated. I see it being used as a way to like, like, an, like a liquid iron. Kind of, you um, hot, make it hot, and then it can just kind of roll around the top, and it's heavy as hell. So I mean, it, it just says it was used to make the the fiber was used the compound used to moisten the fibers was mercury. All so right. they were it was soaking in yeah because it would toughen the furs fibers know, and make okay. them mat together because also don't forget they were they used to have beaver, beaver fur hats were really popular that's why the beavers got cold so bad in America so I'm assuming the mercury was also used in okay. Yeah, the, the beaver kind of beating the leather down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, and the, no. <laughs> we're shooting in the dark a little bit here, but we, we we could pull up. I guess we could even go to like wiki if we wanted to and kind of go over it. But uh, humidity and sweat help temper the shape. So the longer you wore the hat, the more it would actually like solidify the shape. I'm assuming actually, it kind of. I would imagine that would actually loosen it around your head and reform it to, to, to shape your head better, but it, it would soften it while it was <laughs> steaming under it's molding around your, you. Yeah. yeah. So that's interesting though, the, the mercury, cause I was always told that the mercury was on the hat pins. Oh yeah. And that the hat maker would then be sticking in his mouth. <laughs> that's <laughs> kind of thing did happen too. Do. I mean, Artists Mercury. with their paintbrushes <laughs> would get poisoned that way. I mean, yeah. So it's not. Like, I mean, that's not out of the question. I, it, but it totally makes sense that the if the mercury was in the wedding compound, being put on the hat, yeah, and then you're sticking pins through it, getting the mercury on the pins and sticking them in your mouth, yeah, <laughs> because you don't know any better and you're Victorian. Well, I'm just yeah. breathing the vapors of it, just inhaling that toxic vapor, so nice. just working at it. With it all day, every day, <laughs> just now That's, you're a Lewis Carroll character. <laughs> I, I feel like the modern day equivalent is uh, dry cleaning 
in a lot of ways. Well, some of them, I mean, some clothing processes they use formaldehyde. That which yeah, is like why I yeah it stinks so bad to go it's in. It's bad. That's why I have to wash in. everything new that I get, and I don't dry clean because yeah they use formaldehyde and other really harsh chemicals. It's not okay. So good for you're your... talking about in like new clothes, right? <laughs> Yeah, new clothes they use, yeah. New clothes they use chemicals, environment but of chemicals for clothing. But dry clean is dry cleaning is also just straight chemicals. That's how they do it. Well, okay. Yeah. So breathing that in all day every day cannot spray it go. on, or do they like submerge? I think they like... submerge it, but I I've never worked. Yeah, I, like I don't know how I dry know. cleaning works. I, I feel stupid. Everything I buy is wash and wear. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I have a, I have a, I have two suits that I have to own, and I think I've gotten them dry cleaned a couple of times, but. Probably not as often as I need to, but they don't smell. So I don't feel like <laughs> then they don't as need far to be as you washed. Can tell. They don't need to be washed. <laughs> exactly. Breeze it every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> fabric softener, yeah. <sighs> oh, yeah, we have a fiber geek. So uh, you've got your felt. Apparently, you can buy felt forms online mm -hmm. that are just sort of like vaguely hat shaped lumps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you go get yourself a fogger from like Home Depot for like fogging your lawn with poison and you pour boiling water into it. And you can, no joke. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> good, well, I'm, I mean, steam it. Cause um, when you buy a hat, like at a Western store, when you get like with a straw or even just a regular Stetson, yeah. they'll shape it for you. Cause my oh, first yeah. husband, he would get, yeah, and they would, you know, do the shaping and all that. So it's just a, it is, a, it's a steamer. Literally. It's mm -hmm. what it is. Same for leather, you know, for, or for woodworking where you steam it to make it, bend the way you Soften want it so you can bend it yeah okay yeah i actually took my all, hat I, have in. A, all I have is a tea kettle uh, do you think i'll be okay <laughs> I don't know steam. You move it around a little bit i don't know <laughs> <laughs> like oh. i mean i wouldn't take it in the shower with you but you can buy you know s steamers that'll do the trick for you yeah you, you, there are there and they're pretty some better. of them are pretty cheap yeah you just need volume of steam nope <gasps> uh what steamer trucks are for i think i don't know <laughs> That, I have that the haunted trunk me. outside still if y'all want to try it. The haunted steamer <laughs> chest for hats. There, there we go. We can make haunted hats. <laughs> bind your bind a ghost to your hat. <laughs> now, Drew Hayen comments that a, that a kettle will actually work. And I trust him because I know he's made a hat before. Okay. Oh. <laughs> there you go. And that makes one more than any of us have made. That, yeah, that's not my jam. Yep. <laughs> like you, I've made one out of cardboard for funniness, but uh, no, never actually made a hat. Yeah, no. No. <sighs> I have a few that I bought, but I don't even know where they are anymore. So, I'm glad you're listening in, Drew, because I was going to bring you up one sooner or later here. <laughs> I was just Googling hat making earlier this week, trying to find some stuff. Oh, crocheted hats. Nice. And my husband just said that we shouldn't open the trunk because it's been out in the. Yes, it has been out in the rain, but I mean, it's all hot and steamy outside. So if you. <laughs> just so you're, trunk, it's you're making a, a wonderful it, place for mushrooms. You should bring that up, Matt, because I was just going to bring out how we were going to need molds to form <laughs> our hats with. Oh, uh, see what you did there. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who do not know, you do not use the same type of mold. No, no. Because it took my second for my brain to click over and go, wait a minute. <laughs> Cheese mold is an excellent way to mold go. Mold and mercury? Ew. That, that sounds like a band. <laughs> that, that sounds... The mold is is the probably the most important or most difficult to uh, to, to get part of the hat making process so i was looking through a number of youtube videos um about you know what what other diy hat makers are making their molds with um or you know how are they getting them and a number of them are using uh, uh <laughs> well one of that i saw said first find another hat that you don't mind destroying <laughs> like Oh, to take it apart? Yeah. Um, okay. Not to take it apart, but you're going to uh, oh. take the hat, take any any uh, extra gigas off of it, like uh, uh, binding or what have you. So you get the shape, 
and uh, then you uh, uh, coat it in uh, like plastic wrap inside. And I'm I'm really cutting out all the details here, but then you use a uh, uh, great stuff or uh, ex uh, expanding foam and fill the crown of the hat with that foam. So it takes the shape of the hat. Gotcha. And, and then let it sit kind of overnight. It gets nice and, and hardened. And, and then, then you pull it out okay. and uh, uh, sand it. So the, the, the textures that might've been in the hat are gone and you've got like, that the thing to start working with. You got the thing that's the size of your head. <laughs> but uh, in the process, the hat that you took it out of has now been, been you know, parts of you've been ripped off and you've covered it in a uh, hardening <laughs> agent and it's not really Stuff does not ever for come a hat really. anymore. Yeah, no. Duly but noted. that was one way to do it. I thought that was interesting. Uh, there was another uh, person who used like professional cake makers cake forms which are just like styrofoam discs yeah they're about three inches tall and they took three of them and stacked them on top of each other and glued and then started shaving it off until it, they got the shape that they want oh that's cool um and if you're use super glue no they were using pv pva glue yeah white glue i i've um, learned that the wrong way yeah <laughs> Do, 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 do. Oh God! I've made napalm. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> don't do that. Excuse me. However, I know a great place to go find how to make hats. Uh, I thought you were gonna I, say napalm for a second. <laughs> well, I mean, suddenly take a turn. <laughs> one thing at a time. One thing at a time. One thing at a time. That'll be the that'll be the, the episode. This after summer that. on Texas Steampunk Connection DIY. I want to make napalm. <laughs> With Jack, <laughs> but um, no, instructables.com is a fantastic website, and I I have to keep oh. myself off of it because I will lose myself for 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 hours and if not days on that website, and I will have million. I, I have like hundreds of things just favorited that I'll never ever ever get to, but are utterly fascinating. Lists of projects you'll never actually do, but you really want to. I really do. <laughs> But I don't have the, either the money or the time or the effort put into it. Yeah. Uh, everything from like patina patinaing metals to um, you know making ultralight heli uh, ultralight aircraft. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm. That's yeah. pretty broad. I have very broad interests, and that's Clearly. my problem. I don't have the ability to to, to just. I like, like watching other people make things. Yeah, no, that, <laughs> yeah, the internet's fantastic about yeah. that. Yeah, just watch videos of people making things. I feel accomplished. I watched this guy make this thing today. <laughs> Never mind. The video if I ever wanted to, I now know how. <laughs> oh, Drew says he's made a uh, hat form out of plaster. Uh, Drew, did you like fill a hat with plaster? And you know, like pull the form out of the hat like like the drunk. mini foam does? Or, or how did you do that? Sorry, it's a stupid joke. Yeah, he was talking about his his crocheted cotton yarn hats before, uh, and the the one that I saw um, was was pretty keen. It, he made like a top hat, but it looked like it was it was a woven, a lightweight, almost a straw hat. Obviously not straw, but uh, it was pretty cool. I was very impressed, and he sort of tried to tell me how to do it, and it went right over my head. <laughs> <laughs> he starts talking. Oh, it's really easy. And all of a sudden, the, the, the teacher from uh, Peanuts starts talking. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> That's how I felt, yeah. No, oh, no. <sighs> so, what else have we learned about hats? <laughs> I think um, the stiffening agent. Uh, we don't use mercury anymore for reasons, I guess. I mean, you know, regulations, whatever. Yeah. You know. But apparently, uh, shellac is is the uh, the substitute. Uh, yeah, Drew says shellac. In fact, uh, I that was the thing I remember from that conversation mostly. Something, something crochet, something drowned in shellac. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> 
but that apparently is absolutely correct according to the YouTube videos I watched all day today. <laughs> um, well, I to wonder. It led me to wonder. Uh, back in the uh, Barack Obama uh, days, when he was, he was given a shellacking by Congress. Now I'm like, what did that? Did... Oh no! Uh, what? <laughs> Thanks. Oh no, he talked about the president. Now they're out to get him. <laughs> the NSA's there. Oh no! He's been Quick. shot. We need to shut this down. We have to hide. Oh god, no. Oh <laughs> no. We can hear. You can hear me? He's being abducted we can hear you. By the FBI guys. <laughs> As the SWAT team's coming through the windows. And now he's gone. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Well, wow. Okay, so let's move on and not talk who, about. This. Who knew hats were so dangerous? <laughs> it's, it's just a divisive and subversive subject, apparently. I know. Oh, Dear I, God. I, I love the fact that we were considering talking about subver sub Sorry. subversive subjects later about hats. Somebody tripped over a cable. Oh, ah. so okay. we thought we thought the NSA got you. We're talking about Barack <laughs> Obama. <laughs> So, yeah. Remember when he got a shellacking by Congress? I'm like, did they make a hat for him? <laughs> well, shellac is just lacquer. So. You gave him a good lacquering. <laughs> they did. They I'm gave not him sure a what, that, what that means I, in yeah, that that's context a, anymore. That's a weird way to <laughs> I, I heard, I phrase it, that. It's, I just, it's, the, it's, the, it's the whole pattern of like, it's like giving him a licking. You know, it's back him, <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's a whole other... <laughs> Give you a licking. After dark. <laughs> and then the sultry you jazz your kicks purple. in. You drinking your purple. His purple drink. <laughs> See, when you said that, I thought you got the little, the little like jug containers with the little foil wrapper top. <laughs> oh, you know what? Like only colors. There's no like orange does not taste like an actual orange. It tastes like the flavor, the color orange. My parents and, got a bunch of those from Sam's Club one time when we were kids, and I cracked one open, and I was like, "Mom, I think this? something's wrong with this one. They had fermented." <laughs> yeah. You should have yeah. sold those because that would have been some money, right? There. I was like ten. <laughs> I just thought it smelled weird. Yeah, oh, my no. mom was like, they were trying to get him away real quick. And yeah, no, they disappeared. I don't know if they drank him or if my parents drank him or what, but they were out of the fridge real fast. <laughs> these are these these are a little past prime. <laughs> I didn't know that, that could happen with, you know, corn syrup and food coloring. But apparently I there was enough. Been, you know, pasteurized and completely isolated inside the thing, but. Yeah, I mean, and like no actual fruit yeah. juice, nothing to actually right. ferment, but something was, well, yeah. Well, there's plenty of sugar in there. That's all it True. takes. True, yeah. It's all like it takes is wine. just a little bit. Like, it depends on how old they were, because you can't kill everything in those things. They're not. It was Sam's Club, I yeah. mean, in the no, 80s. I get you. <laughs> <laughs> Anything goes. <laughs> oh. Or where you could pick up a toothpick on with meat on the end of it on, on a good Saturday there. The people that would go through and just sample all the way through. The, yeah, no. So. Oh, I remember. I remember that was a thing. You would literally go there and eat lunch while you shopped. Yeah, yeah, basically. You can still Ugh. do that. I, I just got my very own Costco membership card. Oh, oh no! Grown up. <laughs> I hear the Costco chickens are really good. What? Your I hear the roast. All I was gonna say is I heard the Costco roast chickens are like, oh, they are, they are really fantastic. good. Yeah, the rotisserie I, I, I chickens. One, that's I had one yesterday actually. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I've and never they're been. But... They're they are bigger. They use a different type of hen. Turns like out the that they use corn, like they use like game hens and whatnot. One reason they keep shrinking at like the ones at Walmart and HEB and all that stuff for in other places is that they use a smaller bird. The Cornish uh, game hen. Yeah, like they use like a Cornish game hen. I think it's actually bigger than Cornish game hens. It's like a guinea. Or something. Guinea fowl. Yeah. It, <laughs> another weird ass name bird thing that's almost like should be completely not safe for work appropriate. Like, something that the railroad bear and large breasted tits, yeah. you know, as it does not sound like something you could say as a it's a bird. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> It's that five percent. That five percent beer. The pickles beer. are getting too. <laughs> this pickle is something. <laughs> the pickle fumes are too much. Oh 
my god. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, no, Costco is delicious. And, uh, <laughs> to conclude, Costco is delicious. <laughs> I've never had their 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 gross chicken, but I have had many of their their steaks and their their pork chops that are this freaking thick. Um, they've got an amazing selection of cheeses. And that dollar hot dog at the entrance. Dollar fifty hot dog. Yeah, that's like the most stable. That's the only stable coin I know of. <laughs> <laughs> I saw These days, about that on Facebook. Yeah, I, I saw that. Like, I thought that was hilarious because like all the stable coins right now are actually being unpinned, and there's a bunch of them that were supposedly attached to the U.S. dollar or whatnot, and they're actually falling well below the price. And then someone months. posts a picture of the dollar fifty hot dog, going, "This is the most stable thing I know." Actually, Arizona iced tea, too. The price has never yeah, gone up in, cents. like, what, 25 years? The owner yeah. refuses. Yeah, he will not raise the price. He's like, we've been making yeah. stupid money on this to begin with. We're still <laughs> yeah, making so stupid money on this already. Been, like, 99 cents, I think, for that giant can of iced tea. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you a story. Oh, no. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> that I saw on the internet. That, yeah, every time I switch uh, screens, it, it changes. You like light you up. A briefcase from what the was that movie? The, CEO, the, the okay, Costco the hot dog. Of the Apparently there was some sort of board meeting and they were talking amongst themselves how to uh, be more profitable for Costco. And one of the board members or, or one of the high muckety mucks suggested raising the price of the Costco hot dog. And the CEO looked him straight in the eye and said, if you bring up raising the price of the Costco hot dog, I will kill you. Oh my God. Really? <laughs> I, I, wow. I wanna know, okay, so there's, there's a couple questions I have on this. <laughs> this is one of those things of that they talked about at, at length. Like this is his his gig. He wants that raised, and he's mentioned it for like months or years prior. And <laughs> it's just finally just of one it. of those things of like you mentioned this in a board meeting. I'm going to kill you. And he mentions it in a board meeting, and they, they, they just nope. Or is this actually like how he feels about the you know like uh, quote? I came to. Costco co-founder Jim Senegal's once, and I said, "Jim, we can't sell this hot dog for a buck fifty. We're losing our rear ends." Jelinek, the person sp speaking, was quoted as saying, "He then shared Senegal's response. He said, if you raise the effing hot dog, I will kill you. Figure it out.'" Wow. Um, uh, That's a lot of passion for. <laughs> we're not dog. touching okay. my idea. Everyone knows this hot dog. It is a thing. It is how we get people in. People know this is a thing they can guarantee that they can basically guarantee it's going to be there, and they're going to have it. It is an icon. You don't change icons. It's always money in the banana stand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Arrested Development. <laughs> yeah, I guess the uh, the idea is that is it's a lost leader. And raising mm -hmm. that hot dog price is not going to really make you any it's, yeah, it's not going to affect money, anything. But you're not going to make any friends that way. Yeah. And apparently, the CEO is going to be one of those not friends. <laughs> it's a minor bit of goodwill to not. I mean, it's yeah. it's a hot dog. It's <laughs> yeah. You're honestly in the mass in which they sell them. They probably still are making money on them. It's just not a whole lot because the just yeah. the volume of which they sell them at. Yeah, it's yeah. not a profit no. making operations no, it's just there people love the hot like dogs. Cash cow. They, they just it's it, it pays for itself at this point yeah and no you wouldn't want to get rid of that and changing is a stupid idea because it's like all of a sudden you know pricing is bad when the the, the thing you guarantee the dollar fifty hot dog moves to two dollars you know the world's ending at this point <laughs> new millennium pricing the sure sign of the apocalypse the hot dog Please. prices have gone up Oh no! You can quote me on that. Start <laughs> stocking up. Put them away. <laughs> All right, sell your stock, and the company's going under. They can't afford their hot dogs anymore. Speaking of signs of the apocalypse, in communist Russia, McDonald's walks out on you. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. Did you know that's eight percent of of McDonald's global money a year is from Russia? So them stepping away from it and just saying, "Nah, yeah. we're done." Is a huge deal, and honestly, surprising. I mean, for big brands, don't usually they don't do that. Yeah, no. that was that was 
Yeah, that was a surprise. I'm kind of wondering and about the amount it. of money McDonald's spent getting into Russia. Was yeah, amazing. that was huge. it was a 30 year project yeah. to get into Russia, teach them how to grow potatoes. I know it sounds stupid. Teach them to grow the potatoes they need for their fries and vodka and vo- well, the vodka <laughs> fries and basically grow the meat and everything they need for the supplies there for McDonald's because it's not the way we do things here. And they basically had to just rebuild the entire company again in Russia. Yeah. A lot of sunk costs there. They just decided they were done. We're walking away. And I find that very interesting as a company to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why I I was quite, I mean, the goodwill gestures like that are nice, but I always wonder if there's. I assume they made enough money to repay all their sunk costs into it. Yeah. I mean, it's various. been what thirty years. Yeah, yeah. So. I, I'm sure that there was a some ex, cost I don't want to be cynical. analysis yeah. of of the situation where things were going, how everybody else has already left. Mm-hmm. Um, how long is it going to take for you know the economy of Russia to come back to where we're making money, where they can actually afford a Big Mac again? Well, and if their employees are being drafted, I heard something about. A, Oh, yeah. Men in their mid 40s being drafted at this point. Oh, yeah. No, so, Russia has yeah. no ability to wage war yeah. with young people anymore. So, yeah, getting any profit out of Russia right now is dicey unless you're in the oil oil business. Yeah. And yeah. even then, that might be changing. What there is, are entire what are companies. With those rubles. Yeah. <laughs> rubles are worth nothing right now. I mean, it, it bounced back some, which it's still worth nothing, but it's, it's worth more than like Shiba Inu at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> But not by much, which is really surprising. <laughs> Good God. Uh, <clears throat> hats, though, huh? I was going to say, hats. wow. Oh, we, uh, yeah. I so, don't even remember how we got here. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't either. But that, that lead poisoning, man. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, it's a problem. <laughs> so since we're already kind of getting later in the day, what do we want to, what we were looking at talking about next time? Do we want to even like broach that s- subject? Yeah, I think we should just to, like I said, I got, and I had a lot of people coming at me when I made steampunk political, you know, or touched on sensitive issues. So I think it's just a good idea to just, you know, talk about what we're going to talk about next time. You know, well, the unfavorable historical hats problematic costuming issue. there we are yeah yeah problematic yeah. costuming because it's not just the hats there's other i'm gonna focus on the hats you're gonna focus on the hats okay <laughs> i oh, wanted to dress like a villain from indiana jones well that could possibly be a problem depending on which villain any of the villains you're really going for <laughs> which one do you want to be the one that opens the ark of the covenant i mean <laughs> i mean belloc was pretty cool i mean he was french so that's a little different but the, <laughs> the people he worked with was the problem shot. <laughs> yeah. The people he worked with were, were the problem. Mm-hmm. So yeah, next next uh, two weeks from now, we want to talk about some 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 hat styles that are that have proven historically to be problematic. I'm not going to say you shouldn't wear these hats. To, period. Stop. But I think we need to talk about sensitivities and, and concerns about these hats, so we're aware. And Mm -hmm. yeah, and how the hats, where they were primarily worn, and how the people that were in those countries under certain imperialisms might be affected by seeing that. Exactly. Because you've got to take certain things into account. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I will present stories of my own travels and poor choices in hat wear. But because hey, you live and learn. Where, yeah, yeah, you live and learn. Yeah, I thought this. I mean, I thought fifth helmets. I thought they were super cute, you know, with a little. But then I started, okay, you know, wait, this is. There are issues here, and I started listening to other people, and you know, people that didn't look like me, and like, okay, yeah, I, I absolutely see where you're coming from. So, we're not telling anybody not to do anything. We're just discussing a very real issue, you know. Drew texts. The trilby must die, <laughs> which I wanted to talk about actually two weeks ago, but it, which let's talk it? about it. Do you Hang know on, what a trilby a tril- is? I, I know the word. I can't. Oh, oh wait, yes, yeah, we did. The trilby is what We're everybody fedora calls a fedora discussion. now. Yeah, it's not a fedora. It yeah. is a shrinky dink of a fedora <laughs> with the, trilby, with the trilby, tiny trilby, little trilby. brim. Well, that's like my little white hat. Hide your man bun under. 
<laughs> Isn't that the Don Draper hat? <laughs> it's also okay. The, yeah, the trilby is also the hat that um, Belloc wears in Indiana Jones. <laughs> and we're back to the. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's French. It was popular at the time. You've got a lot invested in this guy. I'm just well. It's because wondering my if the whole kind of outfit is back there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have a white suit. And I don't run around going, I have a vineyard that my family runs and I'm willing to, you know, that that was a thing. No, um, the reason so I, I, I take that guy so so that, personally is that he and Indiana Jones actually went to school together and they're very much alike, except Belloc is willing to go do the things that Indiana Jones wasn't for the reasons. Mm -hmm. And so he was the kind of the pushed out of the light Indiana Jones character, really. Mm -hmm. And, Keep justifying uh, the that's villain. Kind of where my character comes from is the the, the slightly darker version of myself. <laughs> I, I think I think uh, Belloc's hat is is still a fedora. You think it's still it, a fedora? It's okay, still got a large enough brim. It it's a it's a straw fedora because he's out in the desert. Mm -hmm. um, but it's I still wouldn't call that a trilby. Okay. Uh, which is a, a a much more I think it's a more modern hat. Mm -hmm. I don't know if uh... it's a fusion between two hats. I hate to say that word, but it is <laughs> hat fusion. Hat fusion. And yes, Drew, I absolutely agree. Raymond Reddington can wear whatever hat he wants. He can pull it off <sighs> as long as he tells those wonderful stories. I know. As, as he about this girl that he knew back or, in this place. <laughs> I used to run Colombian gold out of this out, out of this airport. I asked you a yes or no say, question, Ray. Oh, <sighs> uh, and yeah, the Blues did. Brothers. Yeah. 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 Blues Brothers fedoras. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Smaller yeah. than a brimmed fedora. Just it's like a tiny brim. I think so the Blues Brothers good. still have fedoras. So what is everyone's favorite hat? On me, not very many. For some reason, I could see you wearing one of those big like. Um, oh, here's here's a piece of uh, news: the the the, the mm. horse racing. Um, oh, the derby hats. The derby hats, because those <laughs> get nuts. The derby hats. Those yeah, get those really are, fun. I think we could so have an entire episode of yeah. doing nothing but w looking at YouTube derby hats. They're like Sunday church hats. They're so amazing. I think it's ridiculous and wild yeah. too. Like. Yeah. Those ladies put a lot of time in their hats or pay a lot of money to people to put time in their hats. Yeah. If you're doing that, yeah, you're you're paying somebody for that thing. And uh, but yeah, I saw I saw a couple of those because the, the Derby's been in the news recently from that one horse that went from all the way in the back, had the worst odds ever and won in the last 10 seconds. It moved from the very back to the front. And if you all haven't seen that video on it, you need to watch it. It is hilarious. It is great. It is it it's very it's it's almost that cartoonishly movie comical that actually have actually happened in real life, and there are people who bet ten dollars on this horse and won eight hundred. So damn. Yeah, people who there, there's some people who became millionaires because of this stupid horse that <laughs> was a get this it was a wait in because another guy and his jock another horse and his and a, his jockey could not make it and so they were actually they made it and so they took his place. So they were to stand in and then they win. That thirty thousand dollar horse is now worth millions of dollars. So it is a it is a very interesting story that is movie quality, honestly, about this about that story that went on there. My All favorite right. of the moment. Since we're still talking about that, right? Yeah, we're talking about hats. I'm sorry. <laughs> is 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 the proper bowler. I don't have one. I have I have a bowler kind of here. But it's not, it's not a traditional bowler, which apparently I learned today, because you watch enough YouTube, you start learning things. Oh no! <laughs> it was designed as a helmet. Oh. It it was a it was a hat that you could like knock knock knock. It was a helmet with huh. little holes in the top for ventilation. <laughs> okay, like what time period? Um, because I remember. I mean, I know bowlers. All of but I them. The, I didn't know they were the original bowler. Designed if, as, as a helmet for for workers. Oh, okay. Um, so I guess like a construction helmet, but with class. Oh, classy <laughs> construction. Classy. Helmet. And that's why you see like Victorian martial arts using oh. their bowler hat as a shield or as a 
punch or a blocking device. Oh, okay. I need one of those. (laughs) You need a weaponized hat. There we are. (laughs) Don't we all? I mean, really? No, I didn't didn't realize that was actually a thing. Bowlers were a weapon. All right. (laughs) Is that way Oddjob could throw his? I don't think that was a traditional bowler, but no. <laughs> yeah, but, I don't think yeah, it was sure. definitely an yeah. augmented an augmented hat. <laughs> <sighs> Drew says collapsible top hats. Mm-hmm. But then I mean, where, where does the rabbit go? I don't understand. It's 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 smoke and mirrors. Smoke and mirrors. <laughs> there, there's a hole in the back in the guy's shirt that, that has a tunnel that goes into the hat. <laughs> It hides in his beard. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yes. I, I want to see beard magic now. <laughs> beard magic. <laughs> Careful what you Google, man. I mean, my not, husband not, hides but... chips in his beard sometime, but I don't know if I can. <laughs> I, I think that's on purpose for sure. I do that too. I get it. For later. <laughs> you're sitting there like at night. You're just like. Yeah, we got a bowl of salsa, and you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm out of here. Yep, I I'm think done. We're... <laughs> we'd like to thank our patrons for keeping the lights on here. Um, so a shout out to our friends uh, Dowager Duchess Claire Bear, Jenny and Ryan Shaver, Kitty Vincent, and Rita and Lawrence Allen, who are listening right now. Thank you guys for showing up. Um, if you're listening on this on the podcast, you can find us at Facebook, the Texas Steampunk Connection. You can email us at Texas Steampunk Connection at gmail.com. Uh, if you didn't know we had a podcast, you can find us at Texas Steampunk Connection dot podbean dot com. And uh, we're on Twitter at TX Steam Connect One. Uh, you can also find us on YouTube and Rumble through Steam Chest subscription box. Thanks to Jack. Our music is brought to you by Zapsplat.com. And it is almost 8 o'clock. 9 o'clock. Yes, it's been an hour. Yes, it's been an hour. <laughs> um, do you guys have any anything else you want to add before we sign off tonight? I think I think we hit a lot of different... <laughs> we covered a lot of ground. We covered a lot of ground today. <laughs> we did pretty good talking about how to make hats, considering we've never made hats. That's yeah. true. That's we true. covered really Costco really chickens and hot Drew, dogs. Drew oh, yeah. Hayen was Tommy. here to bounce ideas off of, because he's actually done made the thing hats. we're talking about. So thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Thank you. All right. Until next time, mind your gauges. Mind your gauges. Mind your gauges.